Hey everyone, welcome to Punkcast. My name is William Maxwell. I'm a student of Web3 and the owner of Punk9527. CryptoPunks are 10,000 uniquely generated characters stored permanently on the Ethereum blockchain. No punk is the same. This is a show dedicated to celebrating the punks behind the punk. My hope for this podcast is that we capture the essence of the punk culture, elevate the brand and the individual behind the punk. One last thing. Projects discussed on the show is not financial advice. Crypto and NFTs are a volatile and risky asset class. Please always do your own research. Other than that, let's go. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Punkcast. Today we've got Punk5558. He's a three yaddy with mustache, earring, and purple cap. He's an avid NFT collector and an entrepreneur currently building Bitcoin wallet Singapore. Please welcome fellow Southeast Asian punk, Bullish NFT to Punkcast. Bullish, welcome and uh, great to have you on the show. How are you? Hey, hey, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so how are things in Singapore at the moment? Given, Singapore, uh, Singapore is uh, great. We actually just uh, open up. I mean, our borders have been open up for some time, so uh, you can travel in and out quite easily, which is a uh, which is, uh, I mean, uh... <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing, right? So um, yes. getting back in and unlike Hong Kong. Um, you know, it's a little bit slower than Singapore to open up the doors for uh, tourism and travel and business again. That's right. That's but, right. Um, but um, but may- maybe we could just start with a uh, a-, a simple question. All right. Um, on your on your handle, bullish NFT. How did you come up with that handle? So uh, no, I started at my NFT journey in uh, early twenty twenty one maybe around March to April during that period. Uh, during that time, uh, during that time, uh, the I remember quite clearly reading the news like, on people's like record smashing sale on his uh, the first 5,000 days. He sold it for 69 million. So uh, I, I got a bit of a FOMO and wanted to start collecting uh, some art, hoping to find uh, the next people. And also, uh, this is why I, I, I was bullish on uh, NFT in general. And uh, of course, uh, for me, NFT is, uh, is uh, how to say, it's like a, a, a way to prove, the, prove a digital asset. Lah. Yeah, of course. Cool. That sale from people was a huge one, right? So, uh, yes, yes, yes. so I think at that point, everybody was in absolute euphoria around NFTs at that point in time. Um, yes. So uh, bullish NFTs is a good sign. Uh, hopefully you still are bullish on NFTs in this uh, <laughs> current, current environment. Um, yeah, yeah, of course, long-term wise, uh, definitely still bullish. Everything moves in cycles, I guess. So, uh, I mean, now now at the moment, it's probably the liquidity are drying up and uh, not so bullish, but I think in the long term, uh, this this technology itself, the like NFT itself, will be able to onboard a lot of uh, new new participants, and also a lot of uh, different different type of assets can become digitized. For example, like real real estate, I think it's already happening now, just uh, not not very common. So 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 bullish maybe um. Maybe it might be good just to start off then, I guess, just with a brief introduction to, I guess, who you are um, and your background and, and how you got into NFTs and, and maybe we can take it from there. Okay. Uh, started my crypto journey like, back in 2017. Also around uh, April, March, around this period. Uh, remember that time Ethereum was around 200, 200 to 250. So uh, that was a time when uh, there's a lot of uh, also a lot of bullish momentum on uh, cryptocurrency. So that was when I first bought uh, my first crypto, la, which is Ethereum. And uh, I rode the wave up with together with the ICO mania. 
uh, investing in a lot of uh, different ICO projects. Basically, just from reading their white papers la, <laughs> and uh, just researching on their themes and uh, website. And you have to make a decision whether you want to invest in, in a particular ICO or not. So the ICO bubble went on for six months before it, uh, the, the bubble burst. And uh, of course, 2018, 2019, up, all the way up to 2020, it was a uh, crypto winter. And I kind of went inactive for two years for that period. And thankfully, I was back in the market before the end of uh, 2020. So I managed to ride a wave up in crypto and subsequently I, I entered NFT in 2021. So uh, my first uh, Ethereum NFT is a, a piece of art from uh, Maker's Place. Yeah, I just uh, actually I just checked before coming onto this podcast. La. Bought it for <laughs> eight hundred US dollar back in April twenty twenty one. Cool. What 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 was that piece that you bought for Maker's Place? Uh, I'm not even sure whether the artist is still like producing. Uh, is the if you go to my my Maker's Place account, uh, it's called Road to Space. Okay. Yeah, it's a piece of uh, it's an edition art lah. Seven, oh, cool. it's a seven like the seven edition of this piece. Oh, but nice. that time the, during that time the prizes, the prizes were also uh kind of like elevated lah after the people sale. So a lot of there's a lot of people purchasing art on Maker's Place. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Uh, and so, so Bullish, maybe just to help us go a little bit further back into your background, what were you doing before crypto, like before 2017? Uh, okay. Uh, even even currently, uh, now I still have a, my day job. It's a family business and we do metal fabrication. Usually mm -hmm. we support the semicolon industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a kind of it's an engineering job. Uh, so mechanical uh -huh. engineering. I so I, I, if you want to bring it back to the, like, I graduated from a uh, school of computing. So I actually studied computing, but, uh, but I went into engineering after I graduated. And I worked a, a couple of years before I actually went into crypto in 2017. Yes. Mm. Nice. So it was, I was, I was doing engineering work. Nice. And, and so what, what was, um, I guess what was your journey into into crypto then? So you came from an engineering background, you know. Yes. I guess very structured numbers, objective sort of facts and data. Um, yep, yep. What what was it about crypto, Bitcoin, white papers that interested you the most? Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, actually in uh, when I was studying in college, right, I actually heard of Bitcoin already. So uh, I heard like some of my friends are, are purchasing Bitcoin, but at that time, of course, I thought it was a uh, Ponzi, uh, you know, <laughs> money just appearing out of, out of nowhere. But as I uh, as I researched more more on cryptocurrency and blockchain, I I, I understood the concept behind uh, behind all these different cryptocurrency. Uh, basically, uh. That there is limited supply, and uh, this is, it is a uh, how to say non fungible. Ra rather, uh, how to say non fungible. As in the transaction, oh, sorry, you call it immutable, immutable. Yes. Yeah, that the transactions made are immutable, uh, cannot be reversed, and I I think all these are a very important, a very important concept, and of course, a uh, decentralization. Very, very important concept of how we can uh, change money. La, or I, it's quite hard for me to put it into words. <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's, you're spot on. I think everybody was sort of enamored by the same principles back then too. Yeah. Um, and super curious about it. But um, and, and then I guess from, so you got into Bitcoin and Ethereum and a bit of the ICO, the ICO yes. boom there. Um, yes. Was there sort of any memorable investments you made in the ICO boom that was worth mentioning? <laughs> um, 
to be honest, uh, if I look at my portfolio today, probably none of the ICO really made it. Besides, uh, engine. Yeah, I'm not sure you heard of it before. I think so. Yeah, engine is a uh, is a. Uh, they want. They are doing a uh, like gaming uh, like blockchain for gaming. That's so right. back then, they they there was only a white paper. You know, they they're gonna attract all the gamers to 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 do a to do how to say blockchain enabled games. Good. So all the items will be uh, on the blockchain. You can actually trade between different games. So I was mm-hmm. actually quite um, attracted uh, by the idea and the concept. So I invested then. And uh, this cycle, I actually sold all of them in 2021, which is uh, probably a good decision. <laughs> yeah. 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 But even currently, I think they are still, uh, they're still building they are proposing a L2 like L2 blockchain to for 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 gaming ah. but I haven't really been following since I really sold most of my positions yeah that's uh, probably a smart move um yeah, now, and, I, I, yeah. I was just I was just curious because uh, I remember that ICO sort of craze as well I mean um, I think I didn't participate in any ICOs. I bought a lot on secondary and basically lost mm. a lot of lost lost a lot of capital, but it was a good learning yeah, yeah. experience, but um, an interesting one. And so yeah. and so, maybe talk to me a little bit about your transition from, you know, ICO into into NFTs. I think you said you bought your first NFT on Maker's Place. Yes. Um, what sort of triggered you? to to invest in an nft i mean 800 dollars us at the time as well <laughs> what, what what was the i guess what was the key thing that allowed you to to make the transaction or enabled you to uh as like i mentioned earlier is uh it's during that period because of the beeper sale uh, so there was a lot of news and a lot of hype on like digital art uh like it's going to be really huge in the future so uh I because I made I made uh made some money from the, the up wave in the twenty twenty to the mid of twenty twenty one. So I wanted to diversify some of my portfolio into a uh, like digital art. And uh that that's why I started looking at the different marketplace to to collect art. La. I wanted I wanted to collect art as part of my investing strategy, la, like investment strategy. So uh, during that time, Maker's Place was quite popular. So I I hang around there looking at different 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 artists, different artists and uh, the different art pieces that get launched sometimes get launched different days. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So that was how 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 I got into collecting art art pieces. Nice. No, so you came in through art first, as opposed to anything else, and it sounded like the people, the people yes, yes, uh, yes, sales yes. sort of triggered that. So that was around March twenty twenty one, right? March, yes, April. yes, yes, around March April. Yes, before uh, Bot Apes actually took off, uh, So, and so of... before that, I was I was, I was like collecting art, but my attention shifted to like all the profile pic and the collectibles. Once yeah. uh, the <laughs> the the body it craze took off, yeah. So so maybe maybe talk about maybe we can get to board apes a little bit on, but uh, I'd I'd be interested to understand, I guess how you um, came into CryptoPunks, how you found your how you found the collection, and then leading up to your first purchase into CryptoPunks. Uh, I was I was onboarded actually by board apes to be honest, like in okay. terms of profile pic. So I I missed the mint. I, I bought a few. Uh, I, as in after that, I bought a few apes. At, I think that time was less than one Ethereum. Then, uh, of course, I started hanging out in the in the community in the Discord, and uh, just looking at, uh, like listening to what, what other people are saying. You know, having conversation with them. Then I uh, found out about that. Uh, that the top coll- profile pic collection, right? It's actually CryptoPunks. So. Mm. Uh, that was that was how I I knew about crypto punks and I I at that time I still I I didn't know how I could get one because uh it was not like not on open sea and uh, I heard the the price is actually very high 
so yeah it, ha- it has always been one of my like dream to own one someday yeah so that that was how i i get to know about crypto punks actually it was through like bought it community yeah and so, and so what was it about crypto punks that made you want to buy one uh what is it about crypto punks for me i feel like it's a because at that time uh, bought it was still like the, the price difference is huge so for for me for me the punk is uh i feel is a uh, firstly is a uh, like flex uh, right mm-hmm. so I, I feel that is a uh, and of course, uh, it signifies that you are someone like OG in the space. Mm. Yeah. And of course, uh, of course, thereafter, I learned that there's also a very strong historical significance uh, to the punk collection. Absolutely. Mm. And, uh, and and so so you're punk right now. So punk yes. tri- triple five eight. Yes. Uh, this wasn't your first punk though, is it? You, I think you yeah, said... Yeah, yeah. Your first is this your first punk? No, no, it's not my first punk. Your first, your first punk was three eight one seven, right? So that that's was right. in that's right. June twenty twenty one. Yes. Okay. That's right. So okay. uh okay, uh, the story to this is uh so when the uh, when the bot ape started rising, I, I, I sold most of them. I sold sold them and I, I pulled all my money and I put all my money to I have a a, a, a pool of money and I thought what should I purchase? Uh? And uh, I decided to go for a floor punk, three eight one seven. So that that was my first punk. But of course, uh, being a for me at that time, it was like almost all my liquid capital. So I sold it in three weeks for two Ethereum profit. <laughs> yeah. So but, uh, I, of course, I, I, uh, I, two Ethereum is a lot back then. Yeah, of course. I yeah. I see here I, you bought it off uh, Punk's OTC. Um, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I I di- actually didn't know who I bought it from because uh, <laughs> at that time I was still not very familiar with uh the the punk website and stuff. So I was actually quite nervous, you know, connecting to the punk website and making the purchase of like such a big purchase. So yeah, I I didn't notice who's the seller, who's the buyer, you know, and things like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy. So at that time, it was I think you bought that for. 54 ETH, which is about $53,000 at the time. Uh, no, 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 no. That, that uh, time it was around 15, if I don't remember wrongly. 15 f- to 17 Ethereum. 15 to 17 Ethereum. Okay, yeah. Maybe a little bit further then. Uh, 2021. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, that uh, it was not for 50, 50 yet, like, if I never remember wrongly. Yeah, okay. It's like around 20 max, 20, 18 to 20 Ethereum. All right, cool. And so and so this 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 CryptoPunk is a is a it was a floor punk at the time, a goat and do rag. So yeah. basically were you you were just going for a floor punk? Yeah, I'm ju- I just that's all that's all I could afford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. All yeah. right, so then you so then you sold that and then you, you now you've got punk triple five eight so yeah. he's got a purple cap mustache and earring yes. um wh- why did you choose this guy or how did you right, how uh, did you go about selecting the, the attributes and what were you sort of thinking uh for me i like i always wanted a digital identity that i could build on and so i wanted something that is not flaw something that can be differentiated so always I was looking out for like purple cap or purple hair because uh, I think it is quite distinct and uh, something that I can still afford. I think I can still afford and hold, hold it uh, for a long term. Yeah, no, it's a cool yeah. one. Um, I particularly like the mustache, just just like mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, yeah. and, the, and the purple hat just definitely does, uh, does pop out. Yeah, what, what, uh, and one thing I want to add is uh, I, I specifically chose this because I like the number also. Like 5558, I think it's, uh, the number is uh, very also very easy to remember. And that's why I think it's good to, to, to hold, hold this punk and build an identity around it. 
that's it that's interesting um yeah yeah so i think some people do actually take value into the number uh, of the punk as well so is is triple five a, a lucky number in in chinese chinese <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know, yeah i know, yeah. I know of course I know, eight uh, is always a eight yeah. is always a good number for chinese yeah. Absolutely. and uh like like triple five eight is i think it's a more memorable than uh, like four different numbers that's that's for sure yeah, absolutely. So mm. uh, it might be some alpha, just in case uh, ch- there might be some Chinese buyers out there. Maybe buy up all the Chinese. Yeah, lucky numbers. Because uh, I remember the I think the there's a triple eight pang or like four eight pang. They you sold for a premium. Uh, crazy. Yeah, it, it's a floor pang, but it, it sold how like higher than the the floor price for sure. Cool. Mm. Um and. Bullish. So I'm looking at your your vault right now. Yes. You've got a uh, you've got a pretty interesting collection. Um, mm. really heavy on uh, gutter cats. Yeah. And you've yes, got some, yes. some art pieces, and you've got some photography. Yes. And you got and you've got some uh, some ghosts as well, uh, which is pretty cool. But um, you know, if I was to ask you the question, you know, what what do you enjoy collecting the most, and 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 why do you collect? What what do I enjoy collecting? I mean, uh, if you talk about collecting without uh, any like financial returns, uh, I like to collect photograph and art. That mm-hmm. that's for sure, lah. But if uh, you're talking about like, like, collecting for for ROI, then uh, firstly, I I think liquidity is very important. So I I often collect like uh collectibles that that i can resell more easily mm-hmm. yeah so so if it's pure collecting i i of course i prefer collecting art and photographs where i can enjoy you know taking a look at them when i'm like when when i have nothing on you know just look at the collection or, or in the future I perhaps even put it up in some uh, metaverse gallery or what mm. yeah uh, I'm having a look through your photography stuff. Uh, I'm still trying yes. to wrap my head around photography, but um, do you, do you, is there a, a sort of specific subset you like out of photography? Do you like landscapes or do you like? Uh, uh, I actually like street photography. Okay. Yeah, street photography, like taking shots of people, uh, like like close up shots of people, uh, just living their life. I think it's quite, quite uh, uh, how to say, give insight to what is happening in uh, like certain parts of countries. I I'm not able to experience myself. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Landscape, of course, uh, is the more more common one, but also more popular. And uh, yeah, I I actually huh? collect a a wide variety la. Not just a, uh, not just stick to a particular genre no you do i mean uh, i'm just looking at your other wallet i think you got 1.4k nfts in here so a lot of <laughs> nfts to no, go uh, through. most most of them are like uh, worthless <laughs> so uh you, hidden you hidden into, yeah, those are hidden folders <laughs> you got into the D- hidden folders. mode um yeah 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 cool so so then um are, are you looking at any in this i guess in this bear market are you looking at any particular collections to add uh, to your uh, collection at the moment, if uh, yeah. if if I if I can have enough liquidity, I'll be looking at another punk or like a uh, gen art like Fidenza. Mm. Yeah, these I think these are more like in the bear market, especially the more store of value and the uh, the holders themselves are more diamond diamond handed They 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 don't undercut each other so frequently like you know some other new collections where there's a lot of flippers. So uh, that's that's if I can afford one like in this market. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, okay, another project I actually looking at is uh Meme Land. I'm not sure you heard of it, Meme Land. I have. Yes. Uh, this is the new new meme that is coming up. I think within a month, a month or so lah. So th- so this collection uh, because it's by Nike. Uh, I think it will. It will garner a lot of attention, uh. so I think it's a it's a it's good collection to be whether you're trading or you're gonna mean it. 
I think it is uh there's a lot of opportunity to make to make profit from it. Absolutely. So I I think I missed this one. I mean they uh, they had potatoes. Um, yes, 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 yes. Um, I think I, yes. I've got a feeling it's going to run too. Um, obviously not financial advice, but uh, the guys uh, are based here out of Hong Kong as well, so which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. But um, uh, yeah, hmm. I think they 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 are managed to they will hold the tensions of their their target market very well all the way leading up to to this uh their main captain Min uh, with yeah. uh, their side project the potatoes. So I give them a lot of credit uh, for for what they have been doing over the past months. Absolutely. I mean, they've been building mm. it up over over years, right? Um, building up the the community and the culture and the meme the meme culture. Yeah, which yeah, is really yeah. Hard to right. so yeah, of course, the meme a... meme itself is a very strong strong attraction uh, in in uh, in this space. Absolutely. Mm. Cool. And and then if you were to look back in your NFT career to date, um, would you have yes. any you know wins or losses that are worth mentioning? come to mind uh, like uh basically i bought uh apes bought apes from early i didn't mean it but i bought it early before before one ethereum and i wrote it all the way to been in and out of the trade lah. so i wrote it all the way to like 10 and i sold then i bought back around 30 wrote it to 50 and 50 to 80 yeah, so Apes is definitely one of my winners. Nice. And uh, Gutter Cat Gang, I also miss out on the mean, but uh, I also went in early, like day one. So mm. I like once owned more than 30 Gutter Cats and wow. was one of the top 10 holders. Uh. But now I'm down to six, distributed quite a bit uh, when, when, when NFT was running. Uh. Nice. Of course, uh, Pang Pang Wise uh, made a few decent trade also, except uh, the current one <laughs> where I got stuck from ninety five to the current the current value now, which is sixty five also. Yeah. 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 No, that's cool. And then, if you if you were to um, have a look across the punk personalities in on twitter and i guess the space in general yes uh, would, you, would you have a favorite punk that comes to mind uh for me it would be 6529 uh. 6529 yeah. for his uh threats they are always a uh, very top provoking and yeah, uh the, the things that he want to do for for decentralization or like on chain uh, like he wants to onboard a lot more people into NFTs, and uh, basically, I I I read most of the threads, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm a big six five two nine fan as well, and uh, he's uh, he's one of those mature voices in the space, right? And uh, he's yes. doing uh, really really epic, cool. And yes. then, if you were to describe punk culture in a few words, how would you describe that? I would uh, use the word adventurous, like willing to willing to try and learn new things. Because a lot of uh, punk holders, uh, some of them minted at the start when uh, this thing is not even like, like NFT is not even a thing uh, back then. Mm. So a lot of them are like adventurous and willing to try, willing to take risks. And uh, a lot of them are builders. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, punk start their own projects like uh, you, Pankas mm-hmm. and uh, like the Aliens. I'm not sure whether you heard of it. Aliens by uh, the yeah, yeah. So a lot of them, uh, a lot of them start their own projects and they are they want they they are builders. Uh. They are builders indeed, and 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 you're yeah. you're you're a builder yourself as well, right? So, so yes, I yes, think yes. Uh, you're you're doing Bitcoin Wallet as SG, and you're also yes. working in your uh, your family business, but. Maybe you can share a little bit more about Bitcoin Wallet with everybody. Yeah, so uh, we are a uh, official reseller of uh, Trezor and SafePal. So it is a hardware wallet reseller. We start. I mean, as I started as a hardware wallet reseller, but of course, I see opportunity to add value to the Web three communities, uh, the local Web three community, with more products and services in the future. 
So one of the things I'm looking at is uh, like education, teaching people on how to about self custody and how to use hardware wallets. And I, I think education is a uh, very important, very important to onboard uh, the next phase, the next wave of users. Mm. Yeah. And just educate, I'm with you on that. Education is really, really important. Um, mm. But I sort of feel like there's a lot of friction, right? Not, not a lot of people want to sit down and learn uh, about seed phrases and, you know, blockchains yes. and all those yes. other bits and pieces. Like for you, like how, how are you looking at, um, you know, bringing education to, to, the, to the masses? Oh, of course, uh, the easiest way is through Twitter, as in like post more, more, more educational contents on Twitter. And uh, hopefully in the future can work with uh, certain like institutes, uh, like schools to, to, to push out some of the uh, blockchain educational contents, uh, maybe like enrichment classes or what. But uh, that is that is the future, like, you know. Currently, yeah. there's I don't think there's a lot of demand for such products. Yeah, it mm. is. Um, it is is blockchain and you know blockchain literacy, um, you know, favorably seen in in Singapore. Like, what's the I guess what's the what's the Singapore vibe for crypto and blockchain at the moment? Uh, it's uh, we are very acceptable towards crypto NFT. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, local community that's like thriving very well. Uh, there's meetup, get together, and there's a lot of also a lot of conferences that is uh hosted in Singapore. Mm. So uh, we are we are generally uh very accepting uh, to crypto, but uh, of course uh. We talk about like schools and uh, more traditional schools and institutes. Then uh, the 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 I, I think the acceptance rate is lower. Yeah, mm. understood. And um, cool. And just I guess a, a I guess a final sort of question. Um, if you could pass on a message to the next owner of your punk, what would you like to say to them? Uh, I would say thank you for retiring me <laughs> because I, I feel like I only sell my punk when it hits like seven digits floor. Yeah. So if I, if I manage to sell it uh, in the future, I'll probably be like semi-retired hopefully. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Um, and, and. And Bullish, uh, this was fun. So uh, thank you for taking your time uh, to speak today. Yes. Um, are there any sort of closing uh, messages or any final closing comments you'd like to share? Uh, and also, how can people find you? Uh, of course. Firstly, uh, thank you for inviting me to this episode of Pankas. Very honored to be invited. Uh, I wish you, the listeners, and the punk community in general, best for 2023 and survive the bear market together <laughs> well said um yeah awesome awesome bullish. Right. well this was fun and uh i hope to you know catch you and and, and uh, have a bit more fun on twitter together yes, but, yes, yes. Um, if you come to singapore let me know <laughs> definitely that's definitely on yeah. the cards for next year for sure all right um, all right and guys, that uh, wraps up another episode for Punkcast for the week. And we'll be back next week with another episode. Bye for now.